So before we go in, before I kind of share with you what we came up with as you know, the approach, because every company wants to know what's the approach. Now, how do I attack the people and organizational matters in, when I'm going through transformation? And, but you have to understand where you're coming from. Obviously, the rapid growth of technology, it's amazing. Um, we have a tool, right? And there's other ones out there that you can, you can put 200,000 people in the database and we can do a tool and we can tell you every single job role description in every function in every country that can be automated in two weeks without talking to a single person. I mean, we're getting that far advanced in terms of identifying how the work can change. The technology impact on humans, I think any solution for leaders or people in the company has to hit on what's happening to us because of technology. So you heard of techno stress, right? Eight different technologies, eight different communication things happening to you at one time. You're at, you're at your desk, you're texting, you're same timing, you're on the computer and you're on the phone, right? Um, I was at ExxonMobil and we're working with their IT <coughs> function and they actually felt saddened because they are causing the technical stress because they have eight different communication vehicles in their company. And you know, it's, it's actually overwhelming us. The other technology impact on humans, um, digital dementia, right? I see some heads nodding. Okay, how many people can memorize more than 10 phone numbers right now, right? So what's happening is we're not memorizing anymore. And the part of our brain that does the memorization isn't being used, so it's going into atrophy, right? What other part of our brain is going into atrophy? Empathy and focus. Empathy, think about it. You are supposed to go to your parents, your kid's grandma's house for dinner on Saturday. She's got it all set up, did the shopping. Grandpa went and bought the ice cream. They told the neighbors to stop by. They're so excited you're coming and you text grandma and say, we can't make it. We got a hockey game. What's missing? You're not on the phone. You're not experiencing the emotion, the pain, the sorrow. You don't even have to respond in a way that's humbling and understanding. And when you don't do that, that part of your brain is, is just going into atrophy, right? So there's about 70 studies of college kids growing up Right, atrophy levels, empathy levels going down. So this is not, I'm not trying to say the gloom and doom here. I'm just saying we have to deal with this, right, as we're trying to help companies get through this. Aging workforce, we have multiple generations, types of workers. I think, you know, you all know those types of workers, but there's new types. So in our office in Brazil, uh, Brazil requires 5% of your workforce to be disabled. So we have an EY Institute that trains disabled people to come to work, right? But who's training the work people to understand how to work with disabled people? When you have people speaking in sign language in the elevators and folks with autism, right? Um, it's a two-way street, so we have to continue to advance. There's an available supply of labor. You know, there's also legislation in Brazil for 5% of your workforce to be folks coming out of jail, right? Um, I'm on the board of directors of a company called Strive, where in the last 10 years we put 80,000 people from jails and homeless shelters into jobs. Um, there's 6 million people looking for jobs. There's 6.9 million open jobs. It's just a matter of getting the skill gap closed. And this available labor is the next labor supply that we have to hit. So this is for real, this is happening. And again, it's, it's the supply side and then the demand side getting ready for it. Um, and obviously on the right hand side, what it means for companies is we're clearly moving to new operating models and I'll get into that. Second, clearly new leadership capabilities, throw everything out the door that got you there, it's all new. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Um, growing sense of working for a purpose. You definitely need new energy in your work environment. Cultures need to morph. And we all know about new skill sets. So, so in the workplace, if you're a leader, that's what you're... Um, but so just to talk about a couple of CEOs, I thought this was really interesting, Elon Musk. So who saw that? That's two, two, two months old, right? Um, if you read behind what was behind this, 
right? It was, it was about what we're going to go into. Decision making was impossible, right? And he actually told folks, if you're here and you're trying to work up a chain to get a decision made, skip the process and go. The other thing was communications was a big problem, right? And if you think about it, what's happening is when you put automation in, automation forces horizontal activity across a company. It creates teams. It requires you to work cross functions, right? And, and we're built for vertical. If you listen to everything he's saying, it's the intersection of vertical into horizontal. And we're built for vertical and we're not. And every single time you hear a problem about automation and it not working, the people side is just what I said. It's going to be about the inability of the company to function horizontally because it's all built to go this way. Technology takes the robot out of the humans. So the job left for us is to start working with each other. And guess what happens, right? We got this whole individual me system going. <laughs> now all of a sudden I'm supposed to start working on these teams. And on the teaming, I think it's one is, is understand, you know, there was a study of two emergency rooms and one had better outcomes than the other due to the diversity of the team. And they identified what were the elements of a team. Strategy, communicator, explorer, conductor, action mover, action developer. There's all these roles. When we form teams, we typically will just put people in like us, right? And then when I see my team's not working, it's because I have three communicators that pick three other communicators and are all trying to, to get something done and two years later I don't see anything, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, but so it's the makeup of the team and then who, what, what am I in that team? And you can change roles. And then it's just acceleration of teaming, right? All the different techniques to use for personality styles. I know in Microsoft they use the color mechanism, blue, green, yellow, a little dot on your name tag that says, you know, I'm sunshine yellow, you know, so you know how to approach me versus I'm green mean, you know. And, you know, the whole idea is you change and adjust and tailor how you interact is based on knowing their color, right, through insights.